Good evening, Lima, Ohio. How are we doing, guys? Oh, you guys are going to be an awesome crowd. I already, I don't know any of you, but I really like all of you. Give it up for Mark behind the bar slinging drinks. Legends, Lima, Ohio, we have one hell of a show for you guys. Are you guys ready for some comedy? We've got an all-ladies show in honor of Lima's funniest lady, Phyllis Diller. Free drink to whoever can tell me her birthday. Two days, two days ago. July the 8th. July the 8th? I, oh, you're one of those. You just got to tell you right. That was your birthday? Yeah. Happy birthday. Give it up. I don't know. Is there a birthday? All right, guys. Oh, this is going to be an awesome show. I'm super excited, guys. We've got some hilarious ladies out here tonight. So, uh, uh, just to let you all know, I've noticed there are a lot of ladies in here, so we're all going to get our cycles changed. Don't worry about that. Your period's going to be jacked up for the next, like, three months. No worries. It's okay. I'm an alpha female, so y'all are just going to get online. I tend to do that. My ovaries are very powerful. Uh, so we have one of the funniest ladies that I've seen. I am so sad that I have not met her until tonight, but she is one of the funniest ladies I've seen. A lot of you guys are here to support her. Put your hands together for the one and only Lima's Joni McDermott. Dysfunction Junction, what's your malfunction? And I didn't finish that because there's so many. So we got 
got daddy issues, we got alcoholism, we got bad credit, picking up guys that treat you like garbage. There's so many, so you can make your own. Um, so I'm gonna turn 50 in like five months. I know, right? It's as old as I ever been. I know. Um, I decided earlier today if I and I wasn't gonna say this, but I decided earlier today if I uh, become a burlesque dancer, my name is gonna be Dusty Muffin. <laughs> and they'll be like, "Whoa, she's got a tinsel G-string on him." Nope. Uh, so you know, I posted a sel selfie on Facebook the other day, and they're like, "Whoa, you look awesome in that old filter." I'm like, "No, this is my regular face." Um, it just does this. I, uh, my face is 49, and I've lost hope. I've seen it. Um, you know the. Terms get different, you know, friends with benefits now means somebody with a big, fat, sexy 401k and great <laughs> dental. Um, risky behavior is wearing uh, skinny jeans and eating gluten for me. Um, <laughs> my body is not the wonderland that uh, John Mayer sings about. It's more like a messed up carnival in an abandoned mall parking lot with carnies that don't have any thumbs in their cross-eyed, you know, it's like that. Um, and I sweat all the time. <laughs> it, it, outside today is like what it feels like inside my body all the time. It is the apocalypse all up in here. It's hot. And it's not like sexy sweat. It's like I look like the less sexy Gary Busey coming off a of meth bender. You know, it is, there's nothing sexy about that. I hate my life most of the time. Not because of my husband, because I love you. Uh, but, you know, it's like, and I want to go home at night and rip my clothes off, and it's less take me now, you savage, and more if you touch me, I'm going to cut your hand off. Um, you know, but he did, I have to say, last week, and this is a true story, he loves me so much. I've been married for 25 years, and I'm going to say some bad things about him in a little bit. But, you know, we've been married for 25 years. I came, I know, he has put up with me. So here is to Big Jack McDermott. I'm sorry that I was the one that married up. So there you go. Um, he bought me a present, and I said, what is it? He said, well, go up to our room. And he bought me a box fan to go under our air conditioner. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he turned it up to an 11, and he left the room, and I stripped down my underpants, and I binged Schitt's Creek, because that is the new Netflix and chill, my friends. <laughs> and that is not a lie. You can ask him later if all this shit is true. Um... So, but I am a little upset because he does not talk to our Alexa very nice. And we were on the back porch, we were having some drinks the other night, and you know, she, two, the same song played two times in a row, and he's like, Alexa, you whore. <laughs> That's true. Alexa, you whore. Next song. And then she played it again. And he's like, God damn it, Alexa. <laughs> and I said, Alexa, why do you let him talk to you that way? And she said, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question right now. <laughs> But I know she's going to be okay because the next one that came up was I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> so that bitch will play. And, um, but I, she, he needs to worry because I think she's going to talk to the toaster and get it to jump in the shower one time. <laughs> so he better watch it. All right, so I am married to a firefighter, and he is awesome. I would not want anyone else saving my, saving my life. And actually, he did save me from my life because he saved me from internet dating, but that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> So, um, firefighter, it's some of the myths, um, they don't walk around all day in, in just their bunker pants uh, with kittens. They don't do that. Um, if they get a fire call and they find out that it's really a bachelorette party, they do get mad. Um, but they will keep the money. Uh, and that is how I got this ring. He did not go to Jared, he went to Julia's. So there's that. Um, but, you know, he works a lot of overtime. He works very, very hard. Um, but I'm getting a little bit concerned because I saw this documentary one time uh, called Brokeback Mountain. And um, the guy went away for weeks at a time, um, never came home with any fish, and he never comes home with any fish either. So I don't know what is up, but I may be the secret family. I don't know. Okay, so I went to the dentist a couple weeks ago. Um, I came out of the anesthetic, and the dentist told me I had the nicest teeth they ever came across. Um, <laughs> thought about it for a minute, and it leaves a bad taste in my mouth, I think. Um, but enough about that. Um, sorry, Uncle Mike. My Uncle Mike is here from South Carolina. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, all the fashion.
fashion. I try to stay in fashion. I got one of those kimonos, and I thought I was going to feel exotic, but I think I have more of like the Silence of the Lambs guy vibe when I wear that. And I was going to do a selfie, and it's like, feeling cute, might wear your skin later. IDK. <laughs> Hashtag precious. Um, I don't know. But I don't I, I don't like shopping anymore because I go into Forever 21 and they card me. Um, I I want a store that's like um, 35 on a good day. You know, I want that. I want that that's got like the Xanax and this and the the um, the wine bar in the dressing room so I don't cry when I try on things in suits, you know. I know, right? I know. Or free bar. Yeah. I know. <laughs> they don't give a crap what you look like in the bathing suits. I know. But, um, you know, one place I do shop is JCPenney. The, but the thing I don't like about JCPenney is the brand Sag Harbor. <laughs> because who wants to wear Sag Harbor on your ass, you know? And my mom's like, Jody, it is a place. I'm like, I know, it's back here, right there. Oh, come on, late, you're good. Guys don't get it, we get it. All right, okay. Um, so here's the secret, I feel like we know each other really well. Um, July 2010, I was in Playboy. And by your silence, I can tell you're not behind this, but it's true. Uh, but I was on the opposite, you know it girl, that's right. No, I was on the opposite side of the centerfold. I got paid $100 for a joke and to keep all my clothes on. Yeah, yeah, mama, truth comes out. I know, you wanna hear my joke? Yeah. 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 Um, did you know Viagra comes in a liquid form? No. Because now you can really pour yourself a stiff one. <laughs> Dirty money from Hugh Hefner bought me some kettlebells, baby. Got the core strength happening. Um, so there's that. I, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. This is all like Jesus and Spanx, I'm thinking. It's like, okay. um, I belong to the Lima Writers community, and um, I love to write. I think it's really fun. Um, one thing, um, Facebook now makes me suicidal because I see what you people do with commas and no commas and periods and all that stuff. Um, it's awful. It's like the grammar apocalypse. Um, you know, there is such a difference between let's eat grandma and let's eat comma grandma. <laughs> Savages. Um, or I'm sorry, I love you, and I'm sorry, comma, I love you. <laughs> Watch what you're writing on your Valentine's Day cards. And then, you know, first-hand job experience or first-hand job experience. <laughs> you got to watch out what is happening. I am, that, that is no joke. Um, but, you know, because I like to write, I'm going to share with you, I am starting to write the kind of erotic fiction I want to read. And so, for you tonight, and this may never happen again, I'm going to read an excerpt that I wrote. Woo! All right. Prepare to be disappointed. Okay. <laughs> um, my book is going to be called 475 Degrees of Me, because it's hush. Okay. I turned, to, I turned over to glance at the clock, it's 3.27 a.m. I watch him snoring, not a care in the world. I'm assuming, bastard. An hour passes with me tossing and turning in the sheets when I hear, oh good, you're awake. <laughs> in the moonlight through the window, I see him smile and wiggle his eyebrows suggestively. Jack! <laughs> you know it. Once I went Jack, I never went back, that's right. He smiles, trails his fingers across my back, and says, tell me what you want. So I smile, and I think about his question, and I fantasize, and I say, well, I want you to finish the trim in the kitchen you started two years ago. <laughs> Woo! And he says, baby, I'll be at Lowe's at seven. <laughs> Panty dropper. All right. So if I start a GoFundMe, everybody buy my book. All right. So let's see. All right, I got a hot three minutes. I'm coming in hot. Um, so I like to go to the gym. I started running a few months ago, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that I can crush a 5K, a .5K now. <laughs> I forgot the period. It's a good thing that I'm in menopause because we're not going to have anything. .5K I can handle. Um, I could do a marathon, but not all in a row. Because uh, who wants that, you know? 
Uh, I have to put the sticker like in strips on the back of my car, you know. Um, so I'm a, my car is like a two. Uh. Um, but you know, you go to the gym and people don't always wipe the seats off. But it's kind of interesting because it looks like a sweaty Rorschach test. Because you look at where people sat, and sometimes it's the bat signal. And sometimes it's a question mark, and sometimes it's an exclamation mark, and so, a point, and sometimes it's a Georgia O'Keeffe painting. <laughs> you think about that. You'll Google it later, and you'll be like, oh, I got it. I got it. Um, you know, I, I go to work out, so I, you know, I don't have, you can probably tell I don't have it all together. So I think, <laughs> just saying. I, I, I live with me. Uh, but I, you know, I go to work out. I don't have time to put my makeup on, and I, so I just go. Try to wear a cute little bandana, and I look like Gary Busey doing a bad impression of a less sexy Brett Michael. I, it's awful, you know. But um, if I play my cards right, I have eaten a sensible lunch and a sensible breakfast, and I've got enough Weight Watchers points left to eat my feelings on the way home. So <laughs> it's fine. It's really fine. Um, I can tell you about a couple jobs I've had. Um, I uh, was a loan officer for a while. Now I work in a marketing department at Superior Credit Union, which is the best damn credit union in town. Let me hear you. So you can tell them Monday I sent you. So get in there. Uh, but you know, you go to a financial institution and um, there brings in a wide, just a wide variety of people. Um, things people say, um, you know, they've asked me before if I was a uh, notary Republican. <laughs> like, you know what, I will stamp anything you have, but I leave my views at home. So, um, they want to know when the undertaker is going to make their loan decision. It's like, well, I don't know. Um, I was opening an account for somebody one time, and he's a little bit younger than me, and a um, little bit of a different demographic than somebody I would normally date. Um, he had some neck tattoos and a grill and had a little teardrop. I think that's how many guys he killed on Fortnite. Um, I don't know. But he's like, hey, um, you know, are you, are you uh, married? I said, I am. And he's like, oh, that's too bad. I would date you. And I said, oh, thanks. But what I wanted to say was, your 475 credit score is not a pain. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was a manicurist for about 12 years, and I used to give hand massages to all the clients that came in. The guys especially liked it. And uh, <laughs> you know what's coming. She knows what's coming. Um, and so uh, I was in the back room one time, and I heard this guy come in. He's like, oh, man, is that girl that here that's going to give me that great hand job? <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, I uh, better... Uh, Colin canceled those marketing uh, t-shirts that said, uh, I got nailed by Jody. Um, that, that, doesn't send, that doesn't send a great message. That's, my daughter uh, went to, um, she, we uh, went to a college uh, visit and the mascot was the cougar and I'm kind of glad she didn't want to go there because my t-shirt would have said cougar mom. And I don't think that's really a great message to send. Um, but you know, I mean, I, the only way I can pick up college guys now is if I start driving for Uber. So you know, I'm just saying. Um, the last thing I will tell you about my, uh, my time at the, um, when I was doing time in the nail salon, um, I uh, got paid, you know, of course you get paid in tips. So I went down to buy some toothpaste at CVS and uh, paid with all my ones and the girl rang me up and she's like, oh my God, are you an exotic dancer? <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I got a padded bra and a C-section scar that won't hold glitter glue, so no I'm not, but thanks for playing, you know. <laughs> Give me my teeth.
recently had a baby. Delicious. Cannibalism joke. You guys ready for your next comic? Oh, give me some more than that. You guys ready for your next comic? All the way from Columbus, Ohio. Put your hands together for the improv goddess known as Becky Salin. Guys, keep it going for Gina and for Jody. And for yourselves for coming out here and supporting live comedy. Thank you guys so much. The light is really bright, but I think you all look very beautiful tonight. So give it up for yourselves one more time, huh? Yes. Guys, so uh, yeah, we have some moms in the audience. Do we have some dads in the audience? Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to admit it. I, I'm not going to ask you for child support. I'm only back for one night, okay? <laughs> um, I, I do think it's kind of weird that um, Mother's Day and Father's Day are in back-to-back -back months. Tough time of year for orphans, huh, you guys? <laughs> oh. It's okay for me to joke about that because my dad is an orphan. His parents died when he was 49. You know what? His parents were orphans, too. And then his parents, before, they were orphans. We come from a long line of eventual orphans, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to break the cycle. I'm going to adopt my dad. My mom will be very excited about that. Um, so as Gina said, I am Becky Solon. Um, a little bit about me, I'm 5'3", uh, I'm a Gemini. We got any other Geminis out there? Yeah, yeah. So we're, we've like doubled the capacity of legends with our multiple personalities. That's great. Mm. <laughs> I'll see you five later. <laughs> And uh, oh, most importantly, guys, uh, my social security number is 27285. Oh, go on. <laughs> no, I just remembered I am uh, legally prohibited from finishing that bit thanks to Fifth Third's Customer Protective Services. <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, my eHarmony profile did get a lot of hits, so did my checking account. <laughs> Oh, I feel like we have some other victims of identity theft in the audience. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, we're, we're just whipping out our notepads and pencils, waiting for me to finish that. Uh, 6226, call me. Got it. <laughs> You'll be us. Uh, was that Greg by any chance? No. <laughs> um, you will be sorely disappointed to find out that I do not have any money. Um, I, and I'm okay with Right, guys, I've, I've accepted the fact that I'm going to be pretty much poor my entire life. Um, even as a kid, like, my only dream was to become, like, Ponderosa rich. Oh, you guys know Ponderosa. <laughs> yeah, the budget steakhouse where you celebrate getting good grades in middle school. We have a shared experience. We are relating then you must know that you've got to ace pre-algebra to get that grand buffet. That's what my dad told me, my, my, my orphan dad. <laughs> now, guys, it made me the math leaf that stands before you today. My head is full of useless equations and my body's full of complimentary dinner rolls. It's magnificent. I was a little bit worried. i got to say, I was worried... I thought you guys might be more of like a Cracker Barrel crowd. <laughs> they, oh, God. No, that's like, that's a couple of tax brackets above me. I, I'd be really intimidated by that. Um, I, you know, I probably have a fleet of those Amish rocking chairs that they have in front of the Cracker Barrels at all times. Can't afford that. I'd have to sell some eggs to get those rocking chairs. And I don't like, I mean, I'm talking these eggs. Like, the Amish already have enough eggs. <laughs> There's our farm fresh. Uh, mine are not, it turns out. <laughs> you guys know that once you turn 30, you're not allowed to sell your eggs? Medicine just doesn't want them anymore. <laughs> I called my doctor literally a month after I 
turned 30 and he said, fuck off with those old eggs. Uh-uh, those eggs are expired. That's cold, that's real cold. No, uh, yeah, later that night I snuck out and I um, egged his house. Turns out he was right. I got rotten eggs, ladies and gentlemen. It's not fun. But, um, you know, I, I will share with you guys a little bit of wisdom. I think it's very important to uh, set the bar low in life. That way you're, you're rarely disappointed. Um, so I, I'll give you an example. Um, sir, can I bother you for a minute? Okay, okay what is your name? Mike. Mike. Mike, I'm going to ask you a serious question. This is just about today, not about yesterday, not about tomorrow. Mike, today, have you beheaded anybody? No. Zero beheadings from Mike today, ladies and gentlemen. Mike is the greatest man alive! Mike, I'm writing you in for 2020 on the ballot. <laughs> Guys, that's what you get with a low set bar, just unrelenting joy and very few beheadings. None of you has been beheaded tonight. I can see that. We're doing great. <laughs> so, so that's some free advice for you. Um, now, I have been delving into self-help a little bit lately. Um, and like my parents don't believe in mental health treatment. They don't, like they, they tend to just blame everything on allergies. <laughs> After I had my first panic attack, I called my mom. Like, you know, mom, my, my chest feels incredibly tight. I feel like the walls are closing in. Like, every decision I've ever made has been a mistake. Well, you know, honey, uh, this is a real bad time of year for ragweed. <laughs> Just pop some clearance and you'll be fine. I was after a while. <laughs> She, she was right, actually. <laughs> it was, I just had the sniffles, you know. <laughs> but, no, I, I'm reading some self-help books, and I'm learning one thing important. I'm learning to cut toxic people out of my life. I'm doing that. Thank you, yes. I'm starting with my landlord. <laughs> Hear me out on this, guys. Okay, first of all, he thrives on conflict, and he is, like, so self-centered. I notice you never mow the lawn. I've been smelling something suspicious from your house. I didn't get the last three months rent. <laughs> it's not always about you, Rick! <laughs> Jesus, we need to take a break for a few months, you know? Just stop calling. Ugh. He's persistent, Rick. <laughs> Serving me summonses, all that stuff. I, I don't get it. I, you know, men, right? <laughs> <sighs> so, you know, times are a little tighter in the Solon household right now. Um, my boyfriend lost his job recently. Yeah. Mm, thank you. <laughs> um, it, it's sad, it is sad because he's really smart. Like, he was one of those guys in school who always did really well and never had to study. You know, and you know, that's still true today. I mean, he got a really high score on that random drug test. <laughs> Didn't have to prepare at all. <laughs> what, what happened was he actually like bought a dime bag off a guy at work. Yeah, I was so pissed. I'm like, honey, 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 what were you thinking? We gotta buy that weed in bulk. <laughs> Dude, we shop at Costco for a reason, economics. What you do is you get an ice cube tray, parcel it out by the gram, cover it with saran wrap to keep it fresh. Just take out one a day like pesto pops. That's how my grandma stores her clip-on earrings. It works for her. He'll never learn, you know, he's, he's book smart, not street smart. Not like me, you know, I, I look like this and my name's Becky. I have urban wisdom written all over me. <laughs> it's a, I, I know what I look like. Uh, uh, you know, whenever people meet me for the first time, they like to tell me like which generic white girl celebrity I kind of resemble, except worse. <laughs> when I was younger, it was, oh, um, 
Chubby Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> nice to meet you too. <laughs> now it's, oh, oh that, that lady from Homeland, Claire Danes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except if she didn't get braces as a kid, used the wrong moisturizer her whole life, and just ate like 12 burritos. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a weirdly uncomfortable job interview, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But uh, you know, my sister is uh, doing a little bit better than me right now. Um, anyone have siblings in the audience tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah, me too. That is why I asked. Again, we are connecting. Um, I do have a confession. I, I just asked to get more attention than my sister for like one hot second. <laughs> oh, thank you for validating me. We're, we're a lot alike, uh, except she has like the better nose and a savings account. <laughs> yeah. She's fancy, she's fancy. And she gets a lot of manicures and facials. Not me. I mean, like, the last facial I got was... <laughs> from some guy named Craig. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to brag, but I do feel like mine was more organic. I have never been pregnant. <laughs> My contact lenses might be pregnant, you guys. <laughs> I, I will let you know if in nine months I pop out a litter of AccuView tubes. <laughs> I, I could be like the Bausch and Loam Octomom. At this point, I'm kind of banking on it. I don't have vision insurance. <laughs> It does, it, it comes at a price though, folks, uh, yeah. Guys, I don't know if you know this, and I'm trying not to make uncomfortable eye contact with any of you gentlemen in the audience, but um, it, it kind of burns on the face, your man juice. Don't get me wrong, I do not mind, you know, allowing the split second of target practice, but uh, yeah, I, it does mean I have to spend like the next several hours looking like I just chopped 500 onions in an overchlorinated pool. <laughs> All the visine in the world could not save me from your he spray. <laughs> just much rather take it on tap, you know? <laughs> right on tap. <laughs> Is this accurate? <laughs> okay, if, if it's accurate, uh, come see me after the show. We'll, uh, We'll figure some things out. <laughs> no one? Okay, great. Well, uh, I guess I'll, you know, I got something at home. <laughs> I'll play the home game. Um, yeah, and I don't want to say any of this to, like, shame people, because I am a strong believer that, um, you know, everybody should get off often and well, right? It's a healthy thing. Woo! Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a lot easier as a woman. You know, like, I could just dash into the bathroom stall at the office and uh, DJ the DJ, DJ the DJ. <laughs> I got that backwards. Just take care of business, lickety split, no questions asked. If I'm in there a couple extra minutes, they probably just think I'm taking a selfie. And honestly, I think this would qualify as the ultimate selfie, would it not? <laughs> but guys, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little bit harder for gentlemen. Can't just dash into a public bathroom stall and uh, shake hands with a milkman, can you? It's a little creepy. I'm not saying it's creepy, but it seems a little bit creepy, like maybe a little bit like... 2,000 feet minimum distance from a school creepy. I have a plan, ladies and gentlemen. I'm building a secure facility where anybody can go to gratify themselves. We're gonna have private rooms. We're gonna have guards there, and they're gonna be armed, you know, for your safety and because this is America. <laughs> so it'll also be a great place to go in times of war. Now. We know that I don't have a lot of money, so we're gonna have to go where the property values are the cheapest. Just so happens that property taxes are the lowest in Alabama. Yeah, that, that was not a punchline, but let's take a moment to laugh at Alabama, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna break ground next spring, folks.
roads. I'm going to tell you, look for the brightly painted signs alongside of the road. They're going to read Southern Comfort. <laughs> oh, yeah. No trademark issues whatsoever with Southern Comfort. <laughs> And that was, that was a whole lot of buildup for very little payoff, huh? Uh, not talking about the premise of the joke. That's going to be the motto of Southern Comfort. All right. Yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much. I'm Becky Solid, and we're going to bring Gina back up. It's okay, I'm, I know how to handle a mic. Uh, <laughs> you just squeeze it until they say help. All right, guys, put your hands together one more time for Becky Solid. We got some newcomers in the back. Give it up for the people that don't have a clock. Woo! I love you guys, it's okay. Please clap for yourselves for coming out. Anyways, you guys have been a great audience. Give it up for yourselves. I love the self-love too, DJ and the DJ. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who that was, but I wanted to keep drinking with you. We're gonna have a fun night. All right, guys. I need you guys to get super excited for me, so we're gonna practice once. I want you guys to go. Come on, table. You guys been with me since like eight. Come on now. You did a great job. Good job for you. Oh, you're hot. You're good. What are you drinking? Vodka and cranberry? What are you, 22? Are you, is your name Faith? I feel like I work with you. Are you sure? All right, guys. Are you guys excited for your headliner? Oh, no, 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 no. I've, like, been amping you guys up. Are you guys excited for your headliner? Like, this is some legit shit. She is a national touring comedian right here in Lima, Ohio, coming to see you guys. She, yeah, thank you. I was going to wait because I have no problem waiting. Ask Joe. I will wait. All. National touring comedian. This woman is the founder of The Great Girl Drive. She is a dirty ray of sunshine. I want you guys to give Lima's biggest welcome to one of my favorite comedians, the one, the only, Charlie Hester. Thank you. All right, Lima, are you guys ready for me? Yes! I don't know if you are. You guys didn't laugh at an awful lot of dick jokes, and it's going to be a real long 30 minutes if we don't get that shit taken care of. I mean, the dick is never longer than 30 minutes. Let's, come on. Right? Right, Mike? Yeah, I know. It's fine. It's where we are. Well, my name is Charlie Hester. I play the baritone ukulele. And I sing dirty songs. Now, I know what you guys are probably thinking. You're looking at me, and you're like, she seems so sweet. She seems so lovable. Well, I am, but I have a mouth like a trucker. In fact, um, I was recently kicked out of an America's Got Talent audition because of my dirty pirate hooker mouth. Okay. It's an accomplishment. It's hard to do. Um, anyway, they told me that I couldn't use the word fuck in my set, and my favorite fucking word, you guys. So I, I, uh, I wrote a song where the audience sang the word fuck for me, and they still kicked me out. They did. So what I decided to do um, was to write a completely clean song, just one, that has not one single swear word in it, but still is very true to who I am as a person. And you guys, I fucking nailed it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to get started for you with this song. We're going to ease into the dirty stuff, okay? So, like, Mike, in, like, anal sex terms, like, this is, like, the boobing up stage, okay? Yeah. All right. So this is my completely clean song that I wrote about fetishes. 
Oh yeah. I believe that there's somebody out there for everyone here on this earth. Though you may not think someone's into your kink. That's when you put creative problem solving to work. Now you might have to bend just a little to discover where things are sublime. But the world is a beautiful place when fetishes align. Like maybe you're into defecation. Yeah. And she's got Crohn's disease. I know. I know. And we're not done. <laughs> or maybe he's diabetic, but into cake sitting. And you're into amputees. So just wait patiently. Or if you're into autoerotic asphyxiation, and I take your breath away. Cause there is no doubt, it's fun to get choked out. Gina, I'm assuming you know. Yeah? yeah. And the lottery will think you've won when you have finally come to discover it's a beautiful place when fetishes align. And if you're into autoerotic asphyxiation, please get me those digits. All right. Okay, so we popped the cherry. Everybody still good? Can we get dirtier? Hell yeah. Um, so I was looking around the room um, here earlier tonight, and uh, I can just, I'm just going to tell you right now, um, there are several of you who are here tonight who are going to love this next song. Um, I felt like it was very important to represent a part of the population that does not often get love. And so I am out to rectify that fact, and uh, this song is called Expert. If I was about to have open heart surgery, I'd want a cardiologist with a Harvard degree. And if I wanted to understand relativity, I'd want Albert Einstein to explain it to me. If I was gonna fly up in the sky to get somewhere sooner, I'd want any pilot but JFK Jr. Okay, so JFK Jr. jokes land in Lima. Mic 
that gravy came in real fast last time. <laughs> I am happy to indulge you. You can make a meal out of me. Cause husky boys have the best skills orally. Now I'm not a chubby chaser. Cause neither one of us wants to run. <laughs> oh, but damn, I love a thick boy who's up for having fun. Every inch of you is beautiful. You're perfect as you are. And when it comes to cunnilingus, chubby men have set the bar. to represent this part of the population. Uh, this song is called Results. Well, some folks have searched their entire lives long on a quest to find the Holy Grail. And others have explored to the ends of the earth for discoveries that would serve them well. But what in their endless pursuit for treasure bigger than their eyes. It was never thousands of miles away. No, the treasure was at home between a woman's thighs. Because the real treasure, sir, is when you discover that she's a squirter. <laughs> Looks like you just washed your hair. She's a squirter. It's like Niagara Falls down there. It's liquid gold, but still not pee. Yeah, no, bitches can fight me on that one. <laughs> and what a gorgeous sight to see when you can get her flowing like a stream. Cause she's a squirter. Now you're living the dream. Am I right, sir? Yeah, you're grinning pretty big. Now, when you find a woman who has the knack of drowning your sorrows in fun, you do what it takes to keep her around because darling she is the one so ride her water slide with much gusto and bliss and bring a snorkel along for your snout Mike you're laughing an awful lot at this we don't know what it is it's just me Yeah, and that it takes your mattress a week to dry out. Yeah, whenever I leave a new encounter with somebody, I'm always like, bye, sorry about the laundry. <laughs> Cause hallelujah, she's a squirter. Shoot her rapids just for fun, she's a squirter. Get in there and make her river run. And if you'd like to take a ride, Head first 
into her slip and slide. Bring a sham wow as big as an adult. Yeah, because you're going to think that she's done. But in the words of the late, great Billy Mays, but wait, there's more. Because <laughs> she's a squirter. And squirting is results. So, if you're free tonight and waterboarding sounds right, I got a lady I'd love for you to introduce you to, so I just call her Katrina. <laughs> Too soon? You laughed at the fucking JOK joke, come on! Cause I'm a squirter And squirting is results Squirting is results Sing it with me! Squirting is results One more time! Squirting is results Give yourselves a big round of applause, everybody! I'm gonna have to go air out this coochie after this show. <laughs> little hot, little, and I swear it's sweat running down my leg, not squirt, I, I promise. Well, yeah, okay. Um, anyway, so, um, so you guys, I travel all over the country, I do this everywhere, and this year I decided what I wanted to do was to write a power ballad that was kind of cute, but that made people feel romantical, right? And they just, it celebrates the love that two people enjoy in bed. And so, uh, I'm real fucked up in the head. So this is what I came up with as romance. So maybe it'll touch you. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, this is my, uh, my very favorite song that I'm singing right now. And it's called Sometimes. We've been out a few times, and I love the way you kiss. It's so hard to deny when there's chemistry like this. But there's something important that I've got to say.
because I don't do emotional bullshit real well, okay? <laughs> so don't piss me off and make me shark during sex.
So uh, anyway, but if you do, uh, if you just feel compelled to come and help with that, and you want to just throw me a couple bucks towards the cause, I will give you an amazing sticker that says, Today, I helped a vagina in need. <laughs> Mike, you're going to want one of those. <laughs> Just for proof for your friends, you know. Not just one. Not just one. All right. When you come see me, Buttercup, I'll get you all situated. So uh, anyway, but yeah, so uh, that's what I do. And I really appreciate you guys coming out. Do I have time for one more song? Yeah, of course. All right. So uh, I'm always broke. Anybody else? Woo! You are my people. So uh, the other day, my debit card got declined for a McValue meal. Yeah, which blows a big fat one because then I had to call my husband and let him know there was an issue with the checking account. And that's all sorts of fucked up because we married people. We love fighting about two things, right? Money and sex. Are you, you can say sex here, it's okay. I'm not gonna tell your daughter it was you that answered. But yeah, you fight about money and sex because you don't have either, and that's why you fight about it. So uh, anyway, um, I'm a passive-aggressive bitch, and so I put the discussion that my husband and I had into song form, and I'm going to sing it for you. So we start off with my husband, and he's laying everything down. Hey, money's pretty tight right now, and we are kind of poor. I need you to get off the couch and do a little more. Find something that you love to do and turn it into cash. Well, I think he meant an Etsy store where I could peddle crafts. But he wasn't specific, okay? He continued. We agreed it'd be a stay at home until the kids were grown. But now they're all in high school. So bring, so bring some fucking bacon home. Now that time, he was very specific. So I'm a part-time hooker. <laughs> all right, will you guys do me a favor, Lima? Will you clap? And they say, do what you love and the money will follow. But there's not enough cash in the world for me to swallow. Working this TNA to fill the ATM. And my work uniform is my birthday suit. It's saggy and it's cool, but it's still kind of cute. Making more money than I do in comedy as a part-time cooker. Now, I know, I know what you guys are probably all thinking. Charlie, that's crazy. And also, what are your prices? Fair enough. Well, I, I, I do travel around everywhere, and so I, I never know what the going rate is, you know, in every city that I'm into. So um, let's see, you, I can't really see anybody. You here, sir, in the, in the white shirt and shorts that I see standing right there? You may have recently paid for sex. How much did you pay? We have a joint bank account, so I pay for it every time. Oh. aspire to be. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, I don't know if maybe you're feeling a little naughty and maybe you're interested, but I'm going to tell you about my prices, okay? And I'm going to have you guys clap again just because it gets me off, okay? <laughs> well, let's go, missionary work. All you gentlemen, I'll charge you by the hour and it costs a Benjamin. And if you want to be us in my back door, I won't charge you any extra and I'll beg for more. I'm a part-time hooker, I'm a part-time hooker, yeah, I'm using these tips to pay for grown-up shit, you know, stuff like water and power and fucking band camp for my kid. Okay, now I don't know if you're interested, but maybe you would be if there were things that were happening that were a little bit darker and dirtier. So I have a specialty menu, okay? These are things that I do, they just cost a little bit extra, but they're a whole hell of a lot of fun. Uh, the first thing I like to do, it's called the cross finger crippler, okay? Oh good, somebody back there knows it. So uh, 
Anyway, it's like this really aggressive, like, bite and roll thing, okay? It's super fun. Uh, just like 25 bucks. Um, another one that I really enjoy, it's called the Cross Finger Crippler, okay? So that's gonna be, my pay attention, two in the pink, one in the stink. And then you're gonna give those fingers like a real good tight cross. Um, more for me than it is for you, and you look like you probably have big hands, so we're just gonna say five bucks, okay? Yeah. And also, um, I know that we are in Lima, but if there are any lesbians or bisexuals in the house, ladies, I have a move that is just for you. It's called the screwnicorn, okay? And that is when I take a dildo and I'll strap it on my forehead and just go to town on you all night long. Yeah, um, it's just like, I don't know, like 25 bucks, but throw me a Dramamine because I get a little nauseous going back and forth, okay? I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, so uh, I have a really great friend discount, Gina. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have a family discount because it's really hard to get a business license in Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky never laughs at that joke. <laughs> There's no money back guarantee. That's one policy I lack. But if you make me squirt, then you'll get all your money back. Because we're all fucking done you. All right, you guys clap for me one more time. And they say, do what you love and the money will follow. But there's not enough cash in the world for me to swallow. Look at this TNA to the ATM. Farm is my birthday suit. It's sagging and twinkle, but it's still kind of cute. Making more money than I do in comedy. Okay, you guys are not that drunk. Clap faster. They say, Do we love the money? I'm gonna catch the thumbs up. I'm gonna see you in the end. I'm gonna break your phone, my birthday suit. Thank you for the super cute. Make more money than I do in comedy. Tonight? 